Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to defend my PhD dissertation, and the title is "Viral Product Design for Social Network Effects." My name is Feng Zhou, and my advisor is Dr. Roger Zhao. First, I will talk about motivation and significance of this research. We have seen the phenomenon of product adoption in social networks compared to traditional social networks. Online social networks can speed the product adoption process. For example, Facebook takes about 3.5 years to reach 50% of its adoption, while radio needs 31 years. Another example is that Rain almost dies out in the past two years, while iOS and Android are steadily increasing. So, what leads to such phenomenon? The first reason is the social network effects. And we identified three effects, including word-of-mouth effects, imitation effects, and network effects. First, the word of mouth from one social entity to another not only speed up the process of product awareness, but also influence other social entities to adopt the product. This applies both to positive and negative words of mouth. Second. Increased adoption of specific products or services often leads to herding behavior, especially when there is homophily and the and the product reaches its user base. Third, within a social network, one entity's adoption can be beneficial to other social entities, such as the adoption of a telephone, as you can call more people in the telephone network when more people are in the social network. The second reason is viral marketing. Especially the influence maximization problem, and by identifying an optimal set of customer seeds, so that based on their influence, the expected number of adopters can be maximized in the social networks. The influence maximization problem is based on the diffusion models. They're proposed to describe the dynamic diffusion mechanism of the product in the social networks. Typical ones include linear threshold models and independent cascade models. The last but not least reason is the product attributes. Some product attributes preferred by customers tend to make the product viral in the social network. For example, in the U.S., Android smartphones and iPhone account for the majority of the market. This is probably because some of the product attributes are viral. This problem is related to product portfolio planning or product line design. That is how to identify product attributes. And engineer these product attributes so that they can be possibly viral in the social network. So this research aims to investigate how to incorporate the peer influence of social networks with a focus on the interface of viral marketing, engineering design, and social computing. In order to solve this problem, we propose a new paradigm of design called viral product design for social network effects. Specifically, four research questions are investigated, including what design attributes and attribute levels should be engineered into product. The second question is how to obtain a holistic product utility, accommodating subjective experience. Such a holistic product utility can represent the customer preferences to the product. The third question is how to predict product adoption, incorporating peer influence as a way to model social network. The last question is how to evaluate the viral product design, both considering engineering goals and marketing goals. These four research issues span different research areas, and we have conducted four case studies in order to validate the proposed methodologies. This slide shows the detailed research roadmap of this dissertation. Chapter one. Introduce a general background of the motivation of this research. Chapter two gives a review of related work and points out their limitations, which show the significance of this research. Chapter three investigates the fundamental issues of this research. The first issue is viral attributes, including both viral product attributes and viral inference attributes. We were investigating their contributions to product adoption in the context of social networks. The second issue is how to develop a holistic product preference measure that can capture the dependence among individual product attributes and incorporate in subjective experience when the customer is making decisions about what product to choose. Third, it's also important to understand the diffusion mechanism in the social networks. 
so that we can model the product diffusion process. The fourth issue is how to maximize product adoption and coordinate marketing and engineering concerns at the same time. In order to deal with these fundamental issues, we propose viral product design for social network, and a technical framework is proposed along with a four-step design process. First of all, we need to identify viral product attributes, which are realized by identifying latent customer needs. The second step is to quantify customer preferences while considering customer subjective experience, which can be a key factor for product adoption. The third one is to model social network in terms of its diffusion process, based on which product adoption can be predicted. This paves the way for adoption maximization in the social network. The last one is to evaluate the very product design by maximizing product adoption as a marketing goal and optimizing product line performance as an engineering goal. These four research issues are respectively described from Chapter 5 to Chapter 8. For latent customer needs elicitation, we propose use case analogical reasoning from sentiment analysis of online product reviews. For modeling product preferences, we propose cumulative prospect theory to model individual pop with utilities, and a couple of structure is used to aggregate them as a holistic product utility. We propose a linear threshold hurdle model to describe the product diffusion process, based on which a data mining method named the rough set is used to predict product adoption. Finally, in order to coordinate the marketing engineering concerns in the evaluation process of viral product design, we propose Stackberg against theoretical optimization and hybrid Taguchi genetic algorithm is proposed to solve the bi-level gain optimization problem. The last chapter concludes the dissertation with discussions of limitations and possible future research. Now let's look at the problem formulation. As we mentioned earlier, this research spans across three areas, including engineering design, social computing, and marketing. In the domain of engineering design, this research is related to product planning, which has two stages. The first one is how to identify the product attributes. The second one is to evaluate product portfolio based on customer preference. That is to maximize product adoption based on customer preferences or the share of choice problem. In the social computing, we mainly focus on social network analysis in terms of the diffusion mechanism. In the area of marketing, we mainly focus on viral marketing, specifically inference maximization problem based on a set of C customers. So these two problems, one in the engineering design to maximize product adoption based on customer preference, the other one in marketing to maximize inference based on a set of C customers. So actually we can combine these two problems to make use both of the customer preferences and the C, and the C customers. We call viral product attributes and viral inference attributes and we call this problem as adoption maximization with viral attributes because this is involved uh, both engineering design and marketing so it has engineering concerns as well as marketing concerns and in the following I will discuss individual fundamental issues. The first fundamental issue is viral attributes. They include both viral product attributes and viral inference attributes. Viral product attributes are fundamentally about the content of a product and the psychological effects that it can have on a customer's desire to share the product with peers. It is a subset of product attributes. These product attributes are consistent with the attractive quality attributes in the Cannell model, which delight customers unexpectedly. Viral inference attributes are embedded in the social networks. The most widely used viral inference attributes include personalized referrals and passive broadcastings. Another important kind of viral inference attributes is seek customers in the inference maximization problem. In order to model customer preferences for product choices, two different kinds of decision models are proposed. The normative decision model describes decision making as it should be, while descriptive decision models describe decision making as it is. In the decision making process, it is inevitable to involve personal subjective experiences including affective inference, cognitive tendency, and risk attitudes. 
However, the current decision-making models often ignore the influence of affective factors in the product choice decision-making process. Another important question is how to aggregate individual part with utility functions so that their dependence can be captured. The diffusion mechanism in the social network is often very complex. For a social entity who is inactive, he or she usually has an activation threshold. How to model the activation threshold is one of the issues. What are the operational factors underlying social network effects to activate the social entity is another issue. Most of the decision models posit that once the entity is active, it will adopt the product unconditionally. They ignore the concept of hurdle utility, which can be interpreted as the highest price one is willing to pay for the utility of the product. From product line design point of view, the share of choice problem aims to maximize product adoption with customer preference, while the influence maximization problem in viral marketing aims to maximize product adoption based on the C customers. Therefore, it is important to combine these two problems for adoption maximization with both viral product attributes and viral inference attributes and coordinate marketing and engineering concerns. When a product is designed based on the viral marketing strategy, we can obtain the number of product adopters. Based on the feedback from customers in the social network, we can update the design requirements to improve the design. Such a circular loop can finally maximize product adoption, making use of both viral product attributes and viral inference attributes. Given a social network, social network data as well as experiment data, we want to find an optimal set of product configurations. These configurations actually form the product line. We also want to find an optimal set of C customers in the social network. So based on their joint efforts, the Product adoption can be maximized in the social network and the product line performance can be maximized at the same time. The constraints include the design space in terms of product attributes and attribute levels, the estimated customer preferences, the diffusion process in the social network, and the market engineering coordination. In order to solve this problem, we propose viral product design for social network effects. This new paradigm of design, viral product design for social networks, is supported by viral product design database, which is acquired from the social networks. Along this design paradigm, we propose a technical framework with a four-step design process of four coherent research issues. The first one is how to extract viral product attributes via latent customer needs, and a method called use case and logical reasoning from sentiment analysis for online product review is proposed. Its input are the social network data and its output is the potential viral product attributes. The second one is how to model and quantify customer preferences, which is soft our prospect theory approach. Its input is experiment data, and its output is a holistic product utility indicating customer preferences. The third one is how to model social networks in terms of its diffusion process. We propose a linear threshold hurdle model. Its input is a social network, and its output is adoption result. The final one is how to evaluate the viral product design by coordinate marketing and engineering concerns. We propose a bi-level game theoretical optimization model. Its input are the social network and the product attributes, and we will show its output later when the optimization algorithm ends. First, I will introduce latent customer needs elicitation for viral product attributes extraction. The reason we aim to extract the viral product attributes by eliciting latent customer needs is because that Latent customer needs are often the unexpected customer delighter. Research has shown that such emotion-laden product attributes, especially with surprise, tend to be viral product attributes. Unlike explicit customer needs, latent customer needs may be non-obvious and very difficult to identify. Sometimes customers may not even be consciously aware of them, but are surprised or delighted if they are satisfied. Traditional methods often make use of lead users to elicit latent customer needs. However, it is often hard to identify lead users. Another challenge is linguistic analysis of customer needs due to its ambiguity associated. Thus, we propose to mine and reason online product reviews for latent customer needs elicitation. First, sentiment analysis is used to mine customer preferences for online product reviews. 
then these customer preferences are transformed into explicit customer needs based on which case-based reasoning is used to adapt ordinary use cases to elicit latent customer needs for extraordinary use cases. In the following, I will individually examine viral product attributes extraction via latent customer needs. As mentioned earlier, the import of this step is social network data and the output is potential viral attributes. Specifically, we use product reviews from Amazon.com collected by Python crawler. We apply association rule mining to extract product attributes and use cases. However, one of the problems is that there is plenty of redundancy involved in the product attributes and use cases. For example, picture quality and photo quality of a camera are often considered different. Therefore, we propose a similarity matching algorithm that makes use of WordNet and Python to refine product attributes and use cases. Based on these refined product attributes, we propose fuzzy support vector machines based on a list of effective lexicons to predict customer preferences for online product reviews. At the same time, the refined use cases are decomposed into ordinary use cases and extraordinary use cases based on their frequency and product positioning. Then explicit customer needs are elicited by compiling customer preferences with regard to ordinary use cases. Then we propose case-based reasoning to customize and adapt the explicit customer needs in order to elicit latent customer needs based on the differences and the similarity between ordinary use cases and extraordinary use cases. Then the product attributes that satisfy customer latent customer needs tend to be viral. A case study of Kindle Fire HD tablets has been conducted. We collected the reviews from Amazon.com which are segmented into sentences. Then we use a method talked about previously to predict sentiment of product attributes extracted and elicit latent customer needs with regard to these product attributes. The figure here shows a typical review. For example, the cool new feature called a quick switch shows a positive sentiment. The figure on the left top shows a percentage of positive reviews versus a percentage of negative reviews for 14 product attributes. We can tell that KFHD 7 inches video, audio, reader, dimension, and price received more positive reviews than negative ones, while camera and battery received more negative reviews than positive reviews. The figure in the middle shows the percentage of positive reviews versus negative reviews for product attribute levels. For example, for storage, 16 gigabytes received mostly negative reviews while 32 gigabytes received mixed ones. The figure on the left bottom shows the frequency of each product attributes, and the more they appeared in the product reviews tend to be more important, such as reader, video, screen, and price. The figure on the right shows the frequency of attribute levels. We first transform customer opinions into explicit customer needs for ordinary use cases. For example, for positive review number one, the, in the interpreted needs are the tablet is portable and the tablet has good connectivity, and their corresponding attributes are dimension and connectivity. In order to separate ordinary use cases from extraordinary use cases, we calculate the percentage of use in different interaction elements involving user types, interaction environment, and contextual events. Then based on their individual frequency for each type, we determine that the typical users indoor with daylight and seated form ordinary use cases, while others with small frequency form extraordinary use cases. We organize the case database with cases, an index model, and a domain customized knowledge model in terms of if-then rules for case adaptation. We calculate the similarity between two cases based on their characteristics such as age, gender, for user type. Then both substitution and if-then rules are used for case adaptation. As an example, the figure shows use case number one as an ordinary use case and use case number two as an extraordinary use case. We first identify the major differences and then replace them with those in the extraordinary use case. For example, the tablet is portable indoors for adults in terms of ordinary use cases. Then we replace indoors for adults with outdoors for children for extraordinary use cases. Then we apply if-then rules. For example, 
if there was children involved in the extraordinary use cases, we will condition the latent customer needs with children appropriate or with parental control. As a summary, we'll present the achievement of this step. Compared to the traditional method, the proposed method is able to identify potential viral product attributes for viral product design. Specifically, these attributes can be used as input for modeling customer preferences, as well as bi-level game theoretic optimization in the following step. From the elicitation process point of view, the proposed method can effectively elicit latent customer needs that not only satisfy but also delight customers and also save time and money by automating the elicitation process to a large extent. Following, I will talk about customer preference modeling and quantification for product choice decision making. As we all know that customer preference is one of the key factors in product choice decision making. However, most models only consider decision makers' cognitive tendencies and risk attitudes without considering effective inference. So we extend the cumulative prospect theory to include three effective states and, and two different product types that are effect rich and effect poor. Then we propose Mark Chen Monte Carlo to estimate the parameters involved in the model. Under different experimental conditions, we can show the systematic differences among the parameters to show the influence of the objective experience on product choice decision making. Finally, we propose a holistic product utility using a key media coupler that aggregate individual power of the utility and capture the dependence among them. Now we will look at this step individually. So for modeling and quantifying customer preference, the input are the experiment data, including those for effective states and those for product types. We propose to using cumulative prospect theory, and it has four phases. In the first phase, called perceptual phase, customers identify product types, whether they affect rich or affect poor, then they will estimate the reference of product attributes. Here, the product attributes can be obtained by the previous step. In the second phase, called effective cognitive reasoning phase, we using a subjective value function to calculate the subjective value of each attribute levels. Then we propose to use a logic model to calculate the choice probability. However, humans' probability estimation is often distorted, which is captured by the decision weight of the attribute levels. And finally, the individual power of the utility can be obtained as the product between subjective value and the decision weights. The third phase is called learning phase. We need to estimate the parameters involved in the model. So we propose a hierarchical Bayesian model, which can estimate both individual levels and group level parameters so that it can accommodate individual differences and the group homogeneity. Then MCMC, that is Markovitch and Monte Carlo, is used to estimate the parameters in terms of their posterior distributions so that it can accommodate the uncertainties involved in the model. Finally, we're going to propose a key media coupler structure to aggregate individual power with the utility that can capture the dependence among individual power with the utilities, which is the output of this step. CBT addresses the important subjective inferences on the preference-based product decision-making process using a subjective value function. Unlike normative decision models such as expected utility model, it is reference dependent. Such an emphasis on the reference point conforms to the human perceptual process, which tends to notice shifts more than resting on static states. Second, it has a diminished sensitivity, which means that the change in preferences decreases as it gets away from the reference point. Studies have shown that this is more obvious for effect-poor product like computer CD than for effect-rich product such as a music CD. This is captured by valuation by calculation or valuation by feelings. Third, customers are averse to negative preferences, whether it is for effect-rich or effect-poor products. By shipping these parameters, we can actually construct models that represent different affective states, including positive, neutral, and negative affective states, and the product types, including affect rich and affect poor. We propose to use Markovitch and Monte Carlo to estimate the parameters involved in the model. 
MCMC generates samples by constructing ergodic Markov chains. Here, ergodic means that the chain is irreducible and aperiodic. Irreducible means that every state is eventually reachable from any start, and aperiodic means that the chain doesn't get caught in cycles. Finally, the、uh, Markov chain converges after a certain number of steps to the desired posterior probability distribution. Particularly, Gibbs sampling is used as a special case of the Machopoulos casting algorithm. The main idea of the Gibbs sampling is that, given a multivariate distribution and some initial values of each parameter, it samples each parameter from the distribution of that parameter conditioned on the remaining parameters, making use of the most recent values and updating the parameter with its new values as soon as it has been sampled. This procedure is conducted recursively from the posterior conditional distribution until it converges. A case study of aircraft cabin interior design has been conducted. We identified ten product attributes, and each has two to three attribute levels. Then, twenty-seven orthogonal product configurations are produced with SPSS software. Two studies were conducted. In the first study, participants with different affective states are asked to make decisions about different product configurations, and in the second one, participants are asked to make decisions about cabin interior design with two different affect types. Two types of data were collected, including self-report preferences for each product attribute levels and decision-making data between two design alternatives. This slide shows the affective inference on the subjective value function. We found that the alpha anxiety is significantly smaller than those in joy, excitement, and neutral. This shows that participants in anxiety tend to be more risk averse in the domain of positive preferences. We also found that the value of beta for participants in joy and excitement is significantly smaller than those in neutral and anxiety. This indicates that those in joy and excitement tend to be more risk-seeking for for negative preferences than those in neutral and anxiety. Third, lambda is significantly larger than one, showing that all the participants tend to be averse to negative preferences. The figure below shows the posterior density functions of the parameters. Similar for two different types of products, we obtained the estimated parameters and found that both the values of alpha and beta for affect-rich products are significantly smaller than those for affect-poor products. This supports that customers tend to adopt a strategy of value by feeling for affect-rich products and value by calculation for affect-poor products. Likewise, lambda is significantly larger than one. Showing the aversiveness to negative preferences, the figures here also show their posterior density functions. Finally, we used the proposed method to predict product choice, and for five different models, we obtained the reasonable accuracies around 80 percent. The figure on the right shows the normalized aggregated holistic utility for all the product configurations for five different models. The table below shows the comparisons between two product configurations in terms of individual product attributes. As a summary, we propose cumulative prospect theory to model and quantify customer preferences for product choice decision making. It models how humans make decisions as it is. It also incorporates subjective experience in the decision making process, especially affective elements. The estimation method by MCMC can also accommodate individual differences and uncertainty by producing individual level parameters and posterior density functions. The holistic product utility is finally obtained by an Archimedean structure by considering the dependence of partwise utility functions, which is more consistent than a simple weightless sum. Next, we'll talk about social network modeling for product adoption prediction. The reason we want to predict product adoption in the social network because it, it is the foundation of viral marketing and design. When we aim to maximize product adoption, we need a model that can predict whether one will adopt a product or not in the product diffusion process. There are multiple factors that influence product adoption. When the iPhone six was released, a lot of my friends on Facebook talking about whether to buy or not. In this situation, some adopt because they are influenced by the positive words of mouth in the social network. 
while others like the product very much, especially some of the product attributes like Apple Pay. Others think it is too expensive to buy it. In this research, we propose a linear stressor hurdle model to describe the product diffusion process. This is the third step in the system architecture, and we will examine this individually. Its import is the social network, and we want to model the social network in terms of the diffusion process. And the linear stress of hurdle model is proposed to predict the adoption result. So, given a social network, among them parts of the social entities are inactive, and we use rough set to predict different categories of adopters. According to Rogers. We model the activation threshold with five different uniform distribution based on the adoption categories. Then, in the social network, we identify three operational factors of social network effects, including interaction strength, structural equivalence, and the similarity of social entities, and based on which a logistic function is used to model the inference probability. After we obtain the inference probability and activation threshold, we can determine whether this social entity will become active or not by comparing them. If the activation threshold is smaller than the inference probability, then it will become active. Otherwise, it will still be inactive. If the social entity is active, he or she will not adopt the product directly. This is one of the key improvements of the proposed method compared to the traditional diffusion models. The social entity is also going to compare the hurdle utility with the perceived holistic utility. The hurdle utility can be interpreted as the product price in this model, while the holistic utility of the product indicates the customer preference to this product. Which can be obtained by the previous stage. However, in this research, in order to accommodate inconsistencies involved in the prediction process, we incorporate all the possible features in the diffusion model, such as operational factors, inference probability, activation threshold. We predict the adoption state status using a technique called rough set. In this research, we expand the traditional linear threshold model. We incorporate the three underlying operational factors for social network effects to model inference probability. If it is larger than the threshold, then he or she will become active. In this state, the social entity will not directly enter the adoption state. The condition is that the perceived value of the product. Has to be larger than the product price, which we call hurdle. After adoption, the customer will give positive reviews with some probability, which is to promote the product. Otherwise, he or she will tattle, which means with some probability, mu he or she will promote without buying the product. This is possible because some customers are loyal fans of certain products, such as Apple products. Before they buy the product, they will support them with biases. Furthermore, these product reviews and comments with different sentiment orientation will further influence the perceived value of the product. A case study of Kindle Fire HD has been conducted. We collected the data from Amazon.com and used review comment relations to construct the social network. As shown here, after a customer purchased the product and gave some review. Other people will give comments and get influenced by the review. Thus, we can construct the review comment social network spanned for a year. It has over 5,000 nodes and over 10,000 edges, as shown in the figure on the right. This slide shows the prediction accuracy by weeks, which means we use data at tth week to predict whether those not adopted by the tth week were adopted at t plus oneth week or not. Two different kinds of machine learning methods based on rough sets are used, including decision rules and decomposition trees. In order to compare the proposed model with the original linear threshold model, using t-test, we found that the linear threshold hurdle model significantly outperforms the linear threshold model. Similarly, we find the prediction results by by week, and the similar results are identified that. At least the linear threshold hurdle model marginally outperformed the linear threshold model. Furthermore, we compare the results identified by week and by by week using t-test. We find that at least the prediction accuracy by week are marginally better than that by by week. As a summary, the proposed method is more expressive and powerful than the traditional one. 
This is because we're using finite activation threshold compared to a simple uniform distribution threshold in the traditional models, and we identify three operational factors of peer inference rather than simple inference probabilities. We also uh, we also distinguish between inference and adoption by incorporating the notion of hurdle utility. In the following, I will talk about bilevel game theoretical optimization for viral product design evaluation. Viral product design incorporates the share of choice problem, which is to maximize product adoption with viral product attributes. However, it also needs to optimize product line performance from the engineering design point of view. Viral product design also incorporates the inference maximization problem, that is to maximize product adoption with viral inference attributes. So these two problems actually have competing goals in two different domains, and we need to coordinate both marketing and engineering concerns for viral product design evaluation. The last step produces the results of the whole system, including an optimal set of product variants and optimal set of seed customers. The result not only coordinates marketing engineering concerns, but also optimizes product line performance and maximizing product adoption. And the customers in the social network will, will give feedback to the results produced so that the whole system form a closed loop. Now we'll talk about this last step individually. For viral product design evaluation, it is an optimization model. So we start with the input including a social network and a set of product attributes. Since there are two types of variables involved, we adopt a coordinate wise strategy to solve the bi-level optimization problem. When we fix the product attributes, it reduces to an inference maximization problem. We propose CELF++, that is, cost-effective lazy forward, to solve the inference maximization problem. In the I plus one iteration, we make sure that the expected number of product adopters is larger than the previous iteration. The product adopters are predicted based on the product adoption prediction results obtained in the previous step. When we fix the C customers, we propose to use hybrid Taguchi genetic algorithm or HTDA to solve the bi-level optimization problem. In the I plus one iteration, we force the expected number of product adopters larger than the previous iteration. The selected product variants also need to optimize the performance of the product line as the ratio between the product holistic utility and the product cost. Here, the product holistic utility can be obtained in the second step in the system architecture. The iterations go on by coordinating marketing and engineering concerns until it meets the stop criteria, that is the maximum number of iterations. Another stop criteria that the number of C customers is M. When the algorithm ends, we can obtain the output that is an optimal set of product configurations and an optimal set of C customers. In the evaluation process, the marketing engineer coordination process is solved by the bi-level game theoretical optimization model. In this research, the leader or the up-level model is the marketing goal, which is to maximize product adoption with viral attributes. When the leader makes a decision according to its own strategy and announces the decision to the follower with a set of constraints, here the follower is the engineering goal that is to optimize product portfolio planning or product line performance. Based on the leader's decision, the follower also makes a feasible solution subjected to his strategy and feedback to the leader. And this process iterates until it converges to an equilibrium solution between the leader and the follower. Both the leader and the follower gain some independence, while the leader has a higher priority than the follower. Mathematically, we formulate the bi-level game theoretical optimization as shown here. The up-level problem that is the leader to maximize product adoption based on both viral product attributes and viral inference attributes. And the constraints are mostly included in the share of the choice problem and in the inference maximization problem. In the lower problem, that is the follow is to maximize product line performance at the ratio between customer satisfaction and cost. Due to the time constraint, I'm not going to explain the details here. 
This slide shows the model solution strategy. We propose to use a coordinate wise strategy. In each iteration, we fix one type of the input variable at a time and force the expected number of product adopters no smaller than the previous iteration until the algorithm converges. When the product attributes are fixed, it becomes an inference maximization problem, and it is solved by CELF++. And when the C customers are fixed, we solve the bilevel problem with the proposed hybrid Taguchi genetic algorithms. A case study of Kindle 5 HD tablets has been conducted. The social network is constructed based on the review command network from Amazon.com. It spans 50 weeks and the network include over 5,000 nodes and 10,000 edges, and the product attributes are obtained in the first step, including 12 attributes with two or three levels each. The diffusion model is based on the adoption probability larger than the adoption threshold, and the holistic product utility and cost are empirically estimated. The import also includes the initialization parameters involved in the hybrid Taguchi genetic algorithm. This slide shows the results in terms of three optimal product configurations for Kindle Fire HD when the size of C customers are 20 and 25 respectively. We can see that some of the attribute levels are consistently chosen in the, in the configuration which can be interpreted as viral product attributes such as glare non-sensitive and Amazon Prime. As we recall that glare non-sensitive is one of the latent customer needs in the first step. This algorithm also showed that the expected number of product adopters and the expected surplus as two important measures for evaluation. As we can see that when the C size increases, the expected number of adopters and expected share surplus are increasing. The figures show the convergence of the algorithm for the leader and the follower. We can see that only a, a small number of iterations are involved in the convergence, which showed the efficiency of the proposed algorithm. When both viral inference attributes and viral product attributes are considered both for the up-level and lower-level models, the expected number of adopters and expected share surplus are more than those only consider viral inference attributes. Finally, we also plot the C customers in the social network as red dots. Those have red arrows pointing to the indicated product adopters by those 50 C customers. For example, in G4, there are many C customers and inferenced customers. We also compare these 50 selected customer seeds with all the social entities as a whole. The first two measures are related to product reviews, while others are related to the structure of the social network. For example, for the ratings, we found that the reviews provided by 50 selected seeds tend to be more positive than all the social entities as a whole. For the R degree, for another example, usually the selected seeds have more R degrees than the general as a whole. Hence, we find that the 50 selected seeds tend to be more important or influential in the social networks than the general. As a summary, viral product design makes use of both viral product and viral inference attributes. It thus has more product adopters than those in viral marketing, which only considers viral inference attributes, or those in product line design, which only considers customer preferences. Since it spans across engineering and marketing domains, it can coordinate marketing engineer concerns by using a bi-level game theoretical optimization model. The equilibrium solution obtained is able to capture the interplay and interactions between the engineering design domain and the viral marketing domain. Finally, I will talk about the conclusion and the future work of this research. For the first time, we propose a new paradigm of design named Viral Product Design for Social Network Effects. The proposed design can bridge the gaps between engineering design domain and viral marketing domain, and also for the first time, we rigorously formulate the viral product design problem. In order to solve this problem, we propose the fundamental issues in a technical framework in which an innovative four-step viral product design process is presented. The results obtained can maximize both product adoption and product line performance and thus coordinate marketing and engineering concerns. 
Despite the fact that the case study with a reasonable amount of data actually shows the feasibility and the potential of the proposed method, we do not have a chance to collect more data due to the time constraint. Thus, we mainly focus on the design process rather than data acquisition problem. Second, we only consider a few types of viral attributes. For example, we only consider the product attributes from Kindle Fire HD. Other competitor products such as iPad are not included in this research. Other viral influence attributes such as personalized referral and broadcasting can also be included in the research. Similarly, product types also influence virality. For example, researchers have shown that affect-rich and technological products tend to be viral in the social network. The social network in this research is identified as a scale-free social network, and other types of social networks, such as a small world and random social network, can also be studied. As possible future work, we can compare the viral product design in the context of traditional social network and online social network. Recently, mobile social media is extremely popular, and how they can be integrated in the design process may be the next hot topic, such as Apple Pay. Another possible direction is to connect social media optimization to design products and services. During my study at Georgia Tech, I've published numerous papers, as shown here, in terms of journal papers as well as conference papers. Several others are still under journal review and revision. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to my advisor, Dr. Roger Zhao, and my thesis committee, including Dr. Jonathan Carlton, Dr. Julie Lindsay, Dr. Asha Gugau, and Dr. Heidi Ham. Thank you very much.